This episode is sponsored by Linode. Linode is offering listeners of this podcast a $20 credit, which is good for four free months at their lowest plan. Their plans start at one gigabyte of RAM for $5 a month. You can get your servers in any of their 10 data centers, and their high memory plans start at 16 gigabytes. Get a server running in under a minute. They do hourly billing with a monthly cap on all plans and add-on services like backups, node balancers, long view, etc. VMs for full control, running Docker containers, encrypted disks, VPNs, etc. You can run a private Git server. They provide native SSD storage, 200 gigabit network, and Intel E5 processors. They have 24-7 friendly support, even on holidays, and a seven-day money-back guaranteed. So go check them out at linode.com slash adventures in Angular. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Adventures in Angular. This week on our panel, we have Shai Resnick. Hello, hello. John Papa. I thought we were going to the sauna today. <laughs> Don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> we also I know. Joe Eames. Hey, everybody. I'm Charles Maxwood from devchat.tv, and this week we're going to be talking about the Framework Summit. And since I only know that there is a website and general information about it, I'm going to let Joe dive into a little bit more since he knows more about this. Awesome. So <clears throat> this is like one of our official announcements for the Framework Summit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. John and I have been working on this thing for quite a few months now. Right, John? Yes, sir. Yeah, quite a few months. Um, so we've been putting together a brand new conference. It's called the Framework Summit. And the whole point of the Framework Summit is to have a conference that's focused on front-end frameworks, you know, Angular, React, Ember, et cetera. I've heard of some of those. <laughs> yeah. But is about all of them and not about any one of them, but still is focused on what on frameworks themselves because in this day and age in JavaScript, especially if you're doing, you know, any kind of front-end development, frameworks are such a major piece of what you do. There is such a central piece. There's a lot of decisions made around them. There's a lot of talk around them. And they become, you know, possibly the biggest uh, thing that you do when you're doing your front-end development is the framework, learning the framework, getting the framework right. It becomes, it sets the stage for just about everything else, at least on the front half of your application. And sometimes it sets the stage for a lot on the back half as well. So it's a conference that's focused on all of that detailed towards people that are doing multiple frameworks or people that want to get into a new framework or people that want to be educated about the other frameworks that are out there, even if they don't have any current plans to change whatever one framework they might be working with at the time. So, Joe, I, I have uh, this is Shai Resnick, by the way. I have uh, a question. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's nice to meet you, Shai. Yeah, from the newspaper um, of my <laughs> of my neighborhood here. Um, so I have a question about like what like how does it like how is it different from a normal JavaScript conference where you talk about different frameworks, right? Right. Um, I'd say there's a couple of big differentiators, huge differentiators, in my opinion. I've been to a lot of general JavaScript conferences. And like, like, but, let's list a couple. Like, Fluent is one, Flu right? I haven't actually been to Fluent, uh, but uh, see, I've been to Empire JS, Utah JS. Uh, what was the one There's I went? Several to? JS conf ones too around the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's been a long time. I've been going to these JavaScript or front end framework uh, or front end conferences uh, for quite a while. Web conferences, et cetera, for quite a while. And uh, I mean, I cannot think of. I can't even think of all the ones that I've been to. Just been going to them for so long. And that's a but, great question for folks to ask, right? Like, how does this differentiate from those? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things that I see at the Thank great, you, the web conferences and front end conferences that I go to or JavaScript conferences is they're about everything JavaScript in general, and so you might get one talk or two talks about a framework that you care about, and then the rest are going to be general JavaScript stuff, and that's going to be it. So there's only a little bit about what's really specific to what you're doing. Whereas, so this is a conference where you're going to actually be able to get a fair amount of content on the on whatever framework you're doing. 
At the same token, if you the other the only other choice is to go to a conference that's all about one framework, right? It's either about everything, in which case it's not just about all frameworks; it's about everything JavaScript. If you look, I, I would be surprised if you could find a, a JavaScript conference where more than fifty percent of the conference was on a framework, on frameworks, because they, they got through, there's Webpack, there's Node, and all that sort of stuff. GraphQL, there's so many CSS, many HTML. About ES TypeScript. Yeah. Yeah. So much. Tons of that. So, so this is about being able to focus in on what is such a core activity, which is frameworks, but also branching out to more than just one framework. So, so Joe, uh, Shai Resnick here from the MV Star local newspaper again. Um, <laughs> so, how. <laughs> If if I'm as an Angular developer, uh, or I'm coming to um, a conference like that, like the Fermo conference, mm -hmm. um, what would my experience be like? Um, like all the React or Vue or, you know, I might be interested in listening to uh, other, like how how other frameworks are doing their things, how are they dealing with like lazy loading and stuff like that. And, um, but like, wouldn't I find only part of the talks interesting and not like all of them, like you have in a normal conference, do you have so, tracks or something like that? So if you're talking from the perspective of, if I'm an angular developer, for example, and mm -hmm. I go to ng comp, I've got all talks somehow relatable to Angular. Being an organizer of NGConf, I could say there's definitely one or two that are not going to be re directly related to Angular, but that's probably the max is maybe two talks that aren't directly related to, related to Angular. Just about everything else is going to have something to do with Angular. If the Webpack talk, it's Webpack with Angular, right? The CSS Mine has nothing to do with Angular this year. <laughs> <laughs> there's one right. of those two. Right there you go. There. Um, so... Yes, you, you can go to that conf, to, to ng-conf, for example, and you can see talks only about Angular. But that doesn't mean that what you said is true, which is that every talk is something I'm interested in, right? Mm -hmm. Not every talk that's going on, you, there might be a talk about GraphQL and Angular, and you might have zero interest in GraphQL with Angular. There might be a talk about Webpack with Angular, and you might be of the opinion of, hey, the CLI is handling it, I don't really care. That's a black box. I'd rather just treat as a black box. I really want to learn about these aspects, you know, routing and this sort of stuff. Here's another example. We have no content, no talk about routing at ng-conf this year. Right? So for even shame. an experience, yes, for shame, even an experience at a conference devoted to a specific con topic, a specific framework might not have 100% of the talks either that you want or not 100% of the talks are going to be things you're interested in. So that's not true. This, the statement of if I go to one that's specific to a framework that everything's going to be interesting to me, that's certainly not true. We have plenty of attendees at ng-conf that sit out in the hallway during a talk because there's, it's a talk they're not interested in. Right? But let's say that, okay, I, have, I don't have a talk that I'm interested in the framework conference, okay? So what do I do? Well, you let's know? go back to the, uh, let, me, let me back up and let's, let me keep talking about what differentiates the framework summit from and answer that first question about what about uh, what content I might be seeing and mm -hmm. uh, am I going to be interested in it? So the format yeah. of the Framework Summit is a little bit different. Uh, the four, it's a two-day conference. Day one is a single-track day. Day two is a multi-track day, right? Mm -hmm. So day one, all the talks are designed to be applicable to everybody in uh -huh. one way or another. Nice. So. The talks are going to be, we'll start out, there's going to be like 15-minute keynote talks from uh, representatives from each of the major major frameworks, you know, Angular, React, Ember, Vue, Elm. Um, am I missing anybody right now? Knock, lined up? Knockout. Knockout, yeah. I don't, we're, we're having some trouble finding some official representation from Knockout or Backbone. But um, uh, we're going to... Everybody that we're trying to find as many as much official representation, we've already got a lot of them lined up, like the ones that I mentioned. Uh, Ember. Yep, we've got John, uh, Tom Dale from is coming from the Ember team. Nice. Oh, have, you, have you talked to uh, Steve Sanderson about Knockout? I have not talked to Steve Sanderson about Knockout. Huh, I can ping him. At least we can find out. Steve, you're on the hook. This is live. Steve's on the hook. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got Chris Fritz from the View team. 
We've got uh, Richard Feldman from the Elm team. And then the Angular team is getting back to me on who they're going to send. They haven't like said, we're going to send Igor, for example. But uh, they're getting back to me. And then I'm still waiting to hear back from the React team as well. But uh, we should at least have those five covered. So there'll be like these 15-minute keynotes about the state of the framework. So even if you are doing React and you're not interested in Vue, at least finding out where Vue is at is going to be of value to you at some point. How yeah. interested you are in that particular talk may be low or high, but at least it's of value to you. Then the rest of the talks are going to be about topics that apply, apply to multiple, if not all, frameworks. So it might be a talk on change detection. It might be a talk on lazy loading. It might be a talk on what Webpack has been doing uh, to work with multiple frameworks. Other tools that do that deal with multiple frameworks. So either underlying things that affect all frameworks or tools that cross all frameworks. So that's day one, right? And hopefully there'll be a lot of content. I mean, the CFP hasn't even opened up yet. We haven't even gotten the talks lined up yet, but hopefully the, when, the talks- When is it? It's October with the CFP? No, the, the conference. conference. <laughs> okay. The conference is October 2nd and 3rd. It's going to be up in beautiful Park City, Utah. It's just up in the mountains above Salt Lake City, like literally up in a mountain resort town. Beautiful time oh, of year to have it, early October. You're doing that? Yeah. To, to make it somewhat oh. timely, that's up by where the Olympic athletes train for the Winter Olympics. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can actually look out the window and see one of the big, huge jumps uh, that they train on. Of course, there won't be snow at the time because it'll be early October. But, uh, but you have a snow machine. Huh? Be amazing, amazing. Nah, no, but it's we, gorgeous we up there in the fall. Less. It is, a, it is <laughs> oh, yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah, it'll be orange and brown and everything. So that's so that's day one, a single track. Day two is multi track, and on those days, we're going to have talks that could be specific to a framework. So, you know, obviously the quantity we see of each talk will have something to do with the relative popularities of each framework and what we get submitted for talks. And there'll still be talks that are going to be applicable to multiple frameworks as well. But that way, you you know, we'll be able to see five or ten talks about your framework rather than just two that you might see at a JavaScript conference, uh, a general JavaScript conference. So that's mm -hmm. how the that's how the format is designed to give people the opportunity to do to see you know a lot of everything. And that way, if you're on a team that's doing multiple frameworks, you can go to a lot of them. If you're doing uh, Vue, well. Very, not a lot of people are yet doing Vue, but let's say you're doing Angular and you really want to get into Vue or you want to find out more about Vue, you can still tell your you can, you still get your boss to pay for it because you're going to a conference that's going to have plenty of Angular talks, but you can st step in and watch a, con a talk or two about Vue and uh, get a little bit more of that content as well. And meet a lot of people as well that are doing Vue, people that are doing React, as whatever, and talk to them all. Um, so Joe, so go ahead, Chai. Um, so first of all, that sounds amazing. I knew, uh, to ask a hard question, I knew that you guys will have a very good answer for that. If you've been planning it, it for months, um, and yeah, you want to ask something, John, I have like two more questions, but maybe you have something to add. Yeah. I, I wanted to add something cause Joe approached me on this feels like 10 years ago, but it was mm -hmm. probably a couple months ago. Uh, it was his brainchild and selfishly i'll tell you why i like this idea it may be a little different than joe's reasoning and joe's running this i'm just i'm just along for the ride helping out uh, there's so many people and i've talked on this podcast a lot about who ask the question of which one's better react angular view ember and I, I always say that i feel like that's the wrong thing to be asking you know, better, better, better. We're always fighting over this. The ultimate thing is, which one do you want to use? Just try them all, pick one, run with it. As long as you're one of the leaders and you're successful, why not? I feel like this kind of a conference can help alleviate some of that. I'm hoping two things will come out of this for attendees. People who really want to understand a little bit more about the other frameworks. Uh, and that's a lot of people. Because there are people, for example, who might, imagine yourself, listener, you might be using one of these frameworks today, and you're wondering, geez, should I be using one of the other ones now? Maybe this is a chance for you to at least get a glimpse of how they work, and also to better understand why people are attracted to one over the other, and what the pros and cons are. And then second, I worked a lot, a lot of enterprises, and I get asked a lot, and I, I know this happens a lot inside businesses, which one should we be using? 
And sometimes your leaders just want to know, hey, wouldn't it be great if we just had some kind of an idea in a nutshell of how these things uh, all work? So to me, I like this idea because I think it's a step in the right direction of helping foster the community that we all say we want. Something that where everybody's embracing each other and we can get in the same room as people who love Angular, React, Ember, Vue, et cetera. And we can all get along and talk about how to move them all forward. So maybe it's idealistic, but that's why I got involved with Joe doing this. Well, not yeah. because I needed another conference to speak at. <laughs> and, and to add to kind of the value proposition here, because I know some people are going to l- listen to this and they're going to be like, well, if they're only going to have a handful of talks about Angular, I, I don't really even want to care about what they're doing in React or, you know, Knockout or, you know, maybe you get some brand new framework. I'm planning on submitting a talk, by the way, about a framework that's probably not on your radar. Anyway, um, but, you know, I, I don't really want to care about Vue. But at the same time, one thing that's always interesting about this, and, you know, I can give you evidence that this is the case, is that when you go find out what's going on in that other framework land, a lot of times there's not a great way that's been put out there that solves your problem in Angular. But they've gone ahead and solved it in React or Vue or something else. And so what happens is, is it gives you the opportunity to go and adopt that. You don't have to switch to React to get the answer. You can go build the answer in Angular if you want. And so by yeah, having, hey, think about the, having, having a pattern, Charles, right? That's exactly where I was going. Sorry, right. You know, is, yeah, you know, so you, you go get the inspiration. I really want state management, like what's happening in Relay, Redux, Apollo, whatever. Or no, sorry, uh, but the, the Redux pattern in specifically. I really want that, but I don't want to switch over to React to get it. So what do we have? We have, uh, uh, NGRX, right? And so th- this is kind of the cross-pollination for the communities. And I find that extremely helpful going forward in just, okay, how do we how do we actually do this thing? And, you know, how do we find solutions that aren't in our current realm of activity? Yeah, and I think a good, a great talk, uh, one of the talks could be about how everything is similar between uh between frameworks like you know comparing different um different solutions and seeing like the same stuff we are trying to solve how do you do it in uh Vue how do you do it in React how do you do it in Angular and just like finding out how how we are more alike than we are different uh so that could sorry, also John. like I'm very different than you are sorry man <laughs> No that that's okay <laughs> that's okay oh by the way on that same note let's say John Papa's uh, vision uh <laughs> will not come true how how going are you going to deal with like fights breaking out in the whole room and all that stuff between so, people Good question and I definitely have an answer for that but I want to back up just a tiny bit second and say, you know, I've, I've seen and, and a lot of things have come up because of launching the Framework Summit already, just little pieces here and there. So I'm super excited for when the, the, the conference actually happens and we actually have the content on stage to really open my eyes even wider than they are. But for as, as an example, uh, Jeff Welpley uh, posted a tweet about the Framework Summit and Isaac Mann replied and said, I'm excited to see more conversation around a shared vocabulary for patterns that are common to the major front-end frameworks. A React mm-hmm. developer says render props and an Angular developer says template ref without either knowing that they're saying the same thing. Right? It's this yeah. kind of stuff that really excites me um, to be able to see this sort of like moving everybody forward together. So going on to your next question about uh, fist fights in the hallways. Obviously, <laughs> the point of this is to actually this has a couple of goals right this frame this this conference has a couple of goals one of them is just to educate people in a way in a format in a place and centered around a piece of content that is doesn't already exist yet right a focus that doesn't exist yet which is just front-end frameworks but the second goal that i have for this conference is to actually bring people together the things uh framework wars uh the ideas that there are rights and wrongs 
in technology, like moral rights and wrongs. I'm not saying like we should or should not do a backup, right? <laughs> there, you can definitely say there's a right and a wrong when somebody says should we we should do a backup, but no, you're all wrong, <laughs> except for where you're right. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Uh, no. But wrong. the idea that there is there, I see too much to discussion of religion, uh, not actual religion, but framework religion. And it's today is frameworks. Year, years ago, I was I was privy to si- similar conversations about other things, design back-end patterns. technologies, yeah, design patterns, etc. There's always those who want to declare that this is the absolute right way, and everybody else who's telling you to do something different is selling snake oil. That if you are not doing TDD, you are not doing development right. If you are not pairing, you're not doing development right. If you're not using CQRS, you're not doing development right. And I want to give a a format and a place where people can get outside of those boxes and see the people that are just as smart as they are and just as relatable as they are, are doing things that they aren't doing and they're doing them with good reason and to open that up. So that was, that's a really big goal of this conference is to actually bring these things together. And one of the reasons, one of the things that spawned this is I went to react conf year one and I was definitely well known as an angular person. And I had several people that knew me who showed up, came up and said, hey, you're here. What are you doing? Checking out the competition. And I almost found it offensive. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it's like, I'm not a, this, I, as much as I, you can say that I'm an Angular guy because that's what I know the best and that's what I do most of my education on, I'm, I'm just a person who loves technology, right? Mm. Uh, I'm going to sing, I want to sing that song from uh, uh, Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, a, I'm a technologist first <clears throat> before I'm an angular guy or before I'm a view guy <clears throat> or whatever I'm going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever I'm yeah, going to be next year. Because mm-hmm. four years ago or five years ago, I wasn't an angular guy. I was a testing guy. And five years before that, I was a C sharp guy. You know, that yeah. that part of my identity changes quite a yeah. bit. So I'm not, I don't, I don't like that. What I want to do is to be in a place where everybody recognizes that we're all here to learn. And so that was a big thing for me. So to directly answer that question, the code of conduct will actually have very specific uh, phrasing and wording about uh, disparaging other technologies. What's funny is code of conduct is a code of conduct dot com is the, the general code of conduct. I don't know. By the is way, it, on the same point, you have all these um, small jokes that people like to say, like, no, oh, I said react in an Angular conference, which is so old. Right. Like, you know, it's been going on for years that like, oh, don't say Angular in a React conference or something like that, which is uh, kind of lame, I think. You've that, already right, offended me like point. three times, so. <laughs> so the conf, codeofconduct.com is like this general code of conduct the conferences can use. They actually specifically relate to technology choice or specifically mention technology choices as, you know, harassment can include uh verbal comments related to somebody's technology choices. And we're going to expand it. We've actually expanded upon that in our code of conduct as well. But we'll spend a lot of time talking about it, both in the emails leading up to the event and on stage at the event to talk about the fact that we are here to not uh, point out that there is a right and a wrong way to do things, but instead to learn because we're all, you know, we're all at a place where we can learn and get better. And humility and inclusiveness is the way to get to that and not divisiveness. Well, and just to, to kind of pile Joe, on that. Joe, that sounds great, man. You know what? I'm I'm pumped. Pumped. Sorry, start over again, John. Yeah. Sorry, we'll start over a little bit. Says, Joe, you know, that sounds great, you know, but I'm going, I'm going to pay to go to your conference and if I'm paying, I want to know what I'm getting out of it. What am I getting out of it? I'm what are you getting out of the every man? <laughs> You're talking as the every man? Right. Every man, the, every woman, the every average person. Uh, attendee, the every every person. What am I getting? Get, what am I getting out of the conference? Right. Well, love you. so you're getting the typical stuff that you get out of a conference. There's the ticket. There's the talks. There's the food. Uh, the social opportunities. We're going to have workshops the day before that are. Those will be a little bit extra, uh, but full day workshops the day before. We're going to try to put together some kind of social activities that people can put together. But it it right it always comes back to 
the content you're going to see and the connections that you're going to make. Those are the two by far. Everything else, the nice vacation up in a beautiful part of Utah, getting away from your job for a couple of days and getting away from being underneath your boss's close uh, eye. All those things are great, but the real value comes in the things you're going to learn and the people that you're going to meet, those connections. Those are uh, those are true of every conference just as much as they're true of this one. Well, and hey, just, just Joe, to pile onto this because, I mean, this is the thing that gets me. I was uh, trying to chime in before and say this, but it's very applicable here too, is that I go to the conferences to meet people more than anything else. That's what I go for. And whether you're looking for a job or whether you're just looking to learn new technology or anything like that, it really is those social connections, in my opinion, that make the conferences worth going to. And since this is a conference that kind of transcends the framework barriers, you're going to see people and be able to meet people that you won't meet at other conferences. And that's the kicker mm -hmm. for me. More than any other thing related to any of these conferences, I get to go up right. there. I get to go hang out in Park City, which is nice. But I get to freaking meet people in other communities that I don't reach. Right. Right. Yeah. Are you ready to master Angular? Oasis Digital offers Angular Bootcamp a three-day intense workshop class for individuals or teams. They cover Angular 4 and 2 and focus on the skills and knowledge you need for complex, data-rich applications. They also still offer AngularJS for teams supporting older projects. Bring them to your site or send developers to them in St. Louis, San Francisco, New York, D.C., and other cities and online at angularbootcamp.com. Hey, Joe. This is Chai Resnick from Independence Inject Your Grandma, uh, the local <laughs> newspaper here. Um, how... So you're known uh, for ng-conf and for like creating this amazing, um, you know, fur days and like uh, experiences that are unique, to, like you don't see at any other conference conferences. Um, are you planning anything for this conference as well? Um, I wouldn't say that we have the kinds of plans you would relate to ng-conf. So a lot of that has to do with budget. Right, we're starting off year one. We have going to have a smaller number of attendees than the fourteen hundred that show up to ng-conf. So, but it, as a conference organizer, I definitely know the kinds of activities that I certainly like to attend, and that I see that people like to attend. And I go to a lot of conferences that they kind of cheap out on the things that happen outside of the conference talks. In, in a way, if, I wouldn't say necessarily cheap out from a dollar's perspective, but cheap out from an effort perspective and a care perspective of putting together activities that people care about. So we got a lot of stuff in the works, but I don't have like a specific thing to say that we're going to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. A lot of that depends on how many people actually show up and what the size is. The smaller it is, the more we can have uh, intimate little activities the bigger it is, the more budget we'll have to do bigger activities. But one of the things that we're putting together is, so the conference is on Tuesday and Wednesday. Monday is the workshop day. So we're putting together a program where you can show up on Friday night. Saturday and Sunday is going to be a tour, like an outdoor activity, adventure type of a thing up in, in the Park City area, which is, again, a beautiful outdoor area. There's uh, the a historic old town of Park City, which is a lot like Jackson Hole, Wyoming. There's hiking and horseback riding and four-wheeling available, and uh, there's the Olympic Park. So we're going to be doing some stuff like that for a couple of days for atten any attendees that want to come to that. Then, hope So hopefully we'll get people to come in, go to that for two days, meet people, meet other attendees, go to the workshop day for a day, and then come to the conference for two days. So that's probably the one thing that I could say for sure is going to be happening right now. But you could definitely trust the fact that as a uh, a conference organizer who has uh, does things a certain way when it comes to conferences, that you're going to see a lot of these same types of activities. And I certainly don't have a monopoly as a conference organizer on great activities as well. I've gone to plenty of other conferences that do really great stuff and know how to do activities that really build up the community. React Rally is <clears throat> another great example of that. But yeah, you are going to see some things like that, but a lot of them are still in the works. Who who are the organizers again? Organizers. So we got a large team of organizers, and I'm I'm gonna pray and cross my fingers I don't forget anybody. So we got myself, uh, Sonny Leggett, who also works on NG Conf, John Papa, our very own John Papa, Dan Walleen, uh, Tyler McGinnis, 
Sean Larkin from the uh, you know the Webpack Webpack. forward team. Uh, Merrick Christensen, who was an NG. Oh, Merrick did a comeback. Yeah, (laughs) and just a shout out to Merrick. This is this is really his original brainchild. A long his idea a long time ago was wanting to do a conference about more than just one uh, topic. So uh, Merrick uh, Christensen. Uh, send him send him my regards. I really love Merrick and I miss him. Cool. I will. Sarah Drasner, uh, who uh, works on Vue and works with John. Um, Tracy Lee from this this dot and from lots of other things. Uh, wow. I have, like that's, hold that's on a, a large team. It is a large team. <laughs> uh, Murphy Randall, who's another local person here who has a lot of experience with Elm. And then finally, Dave Smith. We just added Dave Smith. He's also going nice. to be our MC at the event. Nice. Very cool. So there you go. That's our organizing Sh- team. Shout out to Dave as well. Yeah. A total of like 11 organizers at this. <laughs> wow. <conference>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you've got some people who are not just, um, you know, names that I recognize. But they're people that I know have a very strong connection to their communities. And I think that's really right. important for a conference like this. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited about this. I'm super impressed by the, the planning and the, the, the vision. And I think uh, it, will, it will go, I hope, and I, I believe it will go amazing. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, yeah, I'm actually thinking of proposing a talk that I, I haven't talked to Joe about yet, which is more of a, hey, let's let's build the same thing in Vue, React, and Angular, etc., and just kind of explore the differences in these things. And it's a completely factual, unbiased look at some things, and have this thing that we're going to build be something that is approved by people who do Vue, React, and Angular for a living. You know, one of each. Uh, so it's not a, what I don't want to do is I wouldn't want to present up there. Hey, look, there's this awesome, and I would never propose to do this. There's this awesome Angular app I wrote. Let's go see how we do it in technology X and then show it in a way that just isn't normal. You know, um, this is not about a comparative negative thing. It's more about a, I'd love to see how do I build, let's just say, hello world. How do I build hello world in React View Angular? You know, what does that experience feel like, look like, you know, let's see how easy these are. And wow, you know what? I hope you all come out of there with an idea of the other side isn't so different. So kind of like to do in so Yeah, but without the competition, like, right. I don't know if you guys, but I've seen a few of those talks where it's like, Hey, Chuck, you like Ruby and I like, you know, uh, Angular. I'm going to make an app with Ruby that you would never write in your entire life. And it's going to look awful. And then I'm going to say, Rudy, look how terrible Ruby is. <laughs> That's not what I want to do. You know? Yeah. Like it to like a to do app. Yeah. So imagine you know like a view core contributor writing the view part, and somebody on the React team writing that. You know, maybe Dan Everwolf, that kind of a guy, and maybe getting a uh, Dan Wallin to do the Angular side. I yeah. think that'd be interesting. All the positive to to people. Yeah. 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 I think uh, I, I think that that's a great idea. It'd be interesting. Yeah. yeah. Be hard to pull off though. Yeah. But if anyone can do it, it's you, John. No, no, it's you, Shy. Uh, I was going to no. nominate you. <laughs> 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 we can make it a game show. Shy could actually coordinate it with a desk, you know. <laughs> there That's <we> interesting. <laughs> so um, we're, we're kind of running out of time, so I just want to um, push Joe a little bit. So if people want to keep tabs on as you get new speakers or go buy a ticket or anything else. Um, I mean, should they follow you on Twitter? Should they go to frameworksummit.com? I mean, what are the best places to go? Okay. So frameworksummit.com has <clears throat> at the bo- bottom, a little place you can put in your email address to keep getting, get updates on what's been going on. If you're interested in submitting to the CFP, there's a place you can submit to the CFP or to submit to be notified when the CFP opens. If you're working at a company that's interested in sponsoring, there's a place on the website to sponsor. There's a link to the official Twitter account, which is just Framework Summit, uh, at Framework Summit for the Twitter account. You can also follow that as well. So those are places that you can stay up to date. 
uh, and follow along with what's going on with the Framework Summit. One last thing I wanted to uh, mention that was one of the things I was really excited about is that Lynn Clark from the Mozilla team is going to be keynoting at the event, uh, in, you know, separate from when each of the frameworks give their own short keynotes on the state of what's going on. Lynn will actually be giving a keynote, a real true keynote at the event. Nice. Very yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I kind of pushed us to wrap up because John had to go and then he left. So <laughs> <laughs> anything else yeah. we want to dive into before we do picks? Uh, I think we covered all of the uh, uh, major points that I had to talk about. So, All right, cool. Well, let's go ahead and do picks then. For you, the listeners of JavaScript Jabber, Loot Crate is offering an opportunity to save 10% on any new subscription at LootCrate.com. Just enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Loot Crate is one of my favorite things. Every month I get a box in the mail, costs less than $20, and it comes with all kinds of goodies. I have stuff from just looking at my shelf, Batman, Spider-Man, Ninja Turtles, Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and much, much more. So if you're a geek, a gamer, anything like that, and you want cool stuff to put around your office, cool t-shirts, comic books, etc., then definitely check out Loot Crate. To save 10% on your new subscription, go to lootcrate.com slash ruby. Again, that's lootcrate.com slash ruby to save 10% on any new subscription. Enter the promo code BRIDGE10 for 10% savings. Shy, do you want to start us off? Can I be after John? After John? <laughs> <That's good. laughs> no, no, sorry. Okay, okay. I have a couple of picks. Um... So <clears throat> my first pick is uh, a very kind of surprised blog post by me. Uh, I've been dwelling upon the idea of um, writing a blog for years, and I always have excuses why not to do it. Uh, and like, you know, being trying, like, being a perfectionist and trying to figure out what's the best platform to do it and should I buy the main and all the <laughs> kind of crappy questions that keep you from actually doing or sharing your thoughts and, you know, stuff like that. So in an attempt to <laughs> tackle that, I just open up, open up a medium, um, account and started like, and told myself, okay, let's write one crappy paragraph and hit publish and that's it and this will be like you know my first step in fighting perfectionism so it ended up being like a super long blog post <laughs> about fighting perfectionism which like with background and all that stuff of course while i was trying to write about how to fight perfectionism i actually was practicing perfectionism. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. It gives like a backstory to me, to my personal life and all that stuff. So I'll post it in the show notes. And the other pick is anything by Tony Robbins. So if you don't know, Tony Robbins is like, a he was the first coach ever. And he has tons of material on YouTube and probably most of the people already know who who he is, but I freaking love everything that he, you know, speaks about and uh, teaches about. So I recommend um, anyone to get his stuff or to listen to his stuff on YouTube. And so Tony Robbins. Awesome. Um, I'll go ahead and jump in with some picks. Um, one thing that I've been kind of playing with lately, I, I've I've gotten a whole bunch of review units since I went to uh, CES of just various products. And one of them that I've been playing with that I've been really liking is called Game Vice. And what it is, is it's a controller, essentially. So it's like an Xbox controller that fits around your phone. So you slide your um, your phone into one end, you know, with the... I have an iPhone, so it's the lightning connector. And then, you you know, you just slide it around the other end of the phone. And um, and then you can play games like you're playing it on like a PSP or something. And so uh, really, really digging that. Um, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. And then um, another pick that I have, and this is something that I use kind of to, to uh, 
try out uh, or to reach out to people to come on the show. It's also the tool I use to reach out to uh, potential speakers and sponsors uh, for the conferences, and that's uh, PipeDrive. And so I'm, I've been using PipeDrive all day today to reach out to sponsors and speakers, and that has been awesome. And then, um, you know, Joe has mentioned the Framework Summit. I think it's uh, a good time to basically let people know that um, and I, I don't think I've announced them on this show because people do Angular, but uh, we are starting a view show and a React show. And uh, Joe and John are going to be on the view show. And, uh, you know, I have a, a number of people on the React show that are exciting to have around. Um, Kent C. Dodds is one of the co-hosts on that one. Uh, Tara Manixic, um from Progress works with Alyssa is also going to be a regular on that show. And Natter Dabbit from the React Native Radio show is going to be on there. So um anyway excited about both of those um i have the domains you can go check them out views on view.com and react roundup.com and then um yeah i've also just been working on uh the developer summits which are the online conferences that i've been putting on um i have the react one coming up at the end of march so if you're interested in that you can go check that out at react dev summit uh, com and, and I know that, you know, this isn't necessarily the target audience for that, but there is some crossover. And so if you're interested, um, it's free to attend live. So you may as well uh, come see what's going on. Um, I'm looking tentatively at mid to the end of May for the JS Dev Summit. So if you're looking at more general JavaScript uh, conferences, um, kind of like what Joe said, uh, this is going to be different from, um, then definitely check that out as well. I usually ha try and have one or two talks um, about some of the more popular frameworks, but yeah, most of it's general JavaScript stuff. And again, it's free to attend live. You can pay to get access to the goodies, bonuses, and recordings. So anyway, all of that, uh, that's kind of what I'm working on these days. Uh, Joe, what are your picks? Okay, <clears throat> so my first pick is going to be a book that I know I have picked before. But it's also the theme for ng-conf this year. And so I want to pick it again because, one, it's a fantastic book. And if you are going to be coming to ng-conf, it's also <clears throat> a fantastic um, way to get ready for ng-conf. And that is the book Ready Player One. So it's a dystopian future book, but it's actually really centered on the 80s. Fantastically written. The audiobook is read by Will Wheaton, which is pretty cool. Uh, another book that I've been reading and wait, wait, wait. So mm -hmm. about Ready Player One because yeah. I want to. So we have like we, the, there is the movie, right? And yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm not into uh, reading that much. I cannot read more than one page until I get lost, like in my <laughs> distractions. So I, I always do audiobooks or or videos. Right. So. Should I wait for the movie or should I like do the audio? You know, book I haven't seen the movie, but I always find that the you it's hard to enjoy uh, a movie after you read a book. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how much you really want to enjoy the movie. Very few movies I feel like read up, uh, live up to the book. Yeah. So it really depends on how much you want to enjoy the movie. But I think the book is amazing. Like the Martian movie was okay, but the Martian book was oh my gosh, unbelievable in comparison. So this book is really a great book. Uh, the audio book of it is pretty good. So I I don't know, but either one is good. Okay. I really like the book. I thought there's always going to be stuff in the book that they can't fit into the movie. So that's always my recommendation is try to do the book. Yeah, I was going to say, okay. if it Thanks. takes you uh, 10 hours of, you know, semi-continuous time, you know, if you stacked all your reading time up to read the book or to listen to the book, I mean, they're they're trying to condense your ten hour experience into a, yeah. an hour and a half, two hours. So yeah, it's yep. it's it's tough to make the movie as good as the book. And if you've read the book, then my my brain always goes to, oh, they left that out. Oh, they left that out. Yeah. And they yep. they have mm. to, and it's just the way it is. So yeah. Yep. Mm, totally well, okay. Thanks. So another book that I've been reading, and I think I picked before, was the book Dollars and Cents by Dan Ariely. But I've actually been listening to it on Audible. So I'm, even though the book is great and I could make that a pick, I really want to pick the narrator. So it's narrated by this guy named Simon Jones, who actually has narrated a lot of stuff on Audible. He is hands down 
the best narrator I have ever heard for any book. Like, she's so fantastic to listen to. So I'm going to pick the narrator, Simon Jones, on Audible. And those are my picks. Awesome. Well, I think we're pretty much done. So so go check out FrameworkSummit.com one more time. Just throw that out there. At Framework Summit on Twitter, if I got that right, Joe. And uh, yeah, yeah, you did. Um, excited to see it. Um, I will most definitely be there. And uh, it sounds like a lot of other people that you all know. So anyway, we'll wrap this one up and we'll catch everyone next week. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more.